everybody, let's go plant shopping. I needed to deliver a customer order in Woodstock, Ontario, which is about 45 minutes drive from me. But the really cheeky thing is, if I drive a further 15 minutes, I reach my favorite garden center ever. Any excuse to visit humans in London, Ontario. So I thought I'd bring you along and see how I do it making a garden center tour. I'm gonna do a voiceover because, well, number one, I'm too self-conscious to talk in public. And two, it's so much easier to edit. I love the fall colors. And this drive to the nursery is just beautiful. Before we take a look at what humans has, please consider hitting the subscribe button to help my teeny channel grow. And let me know what you think about the available plants at Hemans and their prices. Are there any surprises there? Anything you wish was available in your area? Hemans was founded way back in 1963 and remains family owned and operated now in their third generation. They're focused on making their space your happy place and on providing the best quality products at the best value for your dollar. They grow many crops in-house and are famous for their strawberries. Their wonderful history is beautifully documented on their website and I'll include a link in the description. There are a couple of reasons that I particularly enjoy visiting Hemans, not least their great selection of expensive plants at a reasonable price, but the team are so knowledgeable and helpful. You just know that they love working here. As an aside, I've decided to substitute rare with expensive unless I find something that's truly hard to find. For example, Peperomia maculata is almost impossible to find in Canada. I would class that as rare. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to show you the tropical selection and let you know the prices. When you first walk in, there is just a sea of cacti and succulents. I love looking at them and I always check to see if any Ripsalis have snuck in there with the assorted succulents. These euphorbias were labelled as a Mac Variegata. They range from $99 to $119 and I was so taken with them. The variegation was stunning and they were huge. There's so many quirky plants on this cactus table and the prices were $11.99. I would say most of the cacti were in bloom. Everything on this shelf was $3.99. I find these assorted two-inch shelves can hold some real gems, so it's worth looking through them. They're a really good selection of peperomia with some harder to find varieties. I'm not sure I've mentioned how much I love Gasteria. It reminded me that my succulent garden needs some maintenance and I'd love to do an update on that. I'm totally drawn to anything that looks quirky, imperfect or unusual in some way. I thought the spiral growth pattern on this succulent was really cool. These were super full pots of Peperomia frost. They were $7.99. And these Syngoniums are adorable. You just know once they're moved out of those two inch pots, they're gonna explode with growth. I always want to message Becca de la Plante when I see Fetonia should be like, who's this random person sending me random Fetonia pictures? Okay, now we get to some interesting plants that I didn't know anything about. They had a number of different varieties of insert name here for $19.99 and they were honestly stunning. I was tempted by these full hanging pots of Philodendron Mycon. This is a plant that I struggle with, so I was thinking maybe a more established plant would help me. These were $49.99. And the string of things were $11.99. These homolaminas were $30. They were really, really pretty. More 399 cacti. And look at this weirdo. I took all my willpower not to bring this one home. Quinn can't even look at Lilops. I thought she'd really like them, but they make her feel physically sick. Most of these were blooming. 
Ta-da! A few Hoya Karii one leafers. I did check them all and about five of them had visible new growth points. These string of hearts were $9.99. They were pretty full pots too. There's one that has a new growth point there. They were $11.99. Okay, let's do a quick fire round. These were super full pots of Philodendron Painted Lady and they were $14.99. These Florida greens were $9.99. The Philodendron White Knights and White Wizards were $24.99 and they had varying levels of variegation. This Philodendron was new to me and I wonder if it's a grower's name. The Milano Chrysums were $50. These are definitely coming down in price on buy, sell and trade groups. And the Vericosums were $24.99. I was a little bit surprised that the Milanos were double the price of the Vericosums. What do you think? This showstopper variegated Giganticum is $1,200, but oh my gosh, huge and beautiful. Another new philodendron to me, Summer Glory for $50. It looks like the new leaves come in a blush pink color before fading back to green. These Birkins were huge for $34.99, and apparently they're called White Measure, I'm guessing the grower's name. Some of them had really pretty variegation. Prince of Orange for $24.99. I do find Gold Yai to be an interesting philodendron. These were 25 bucks. Nice big silver swords for $30. These philodendron splendids were $50 and these were really big specimens, nice big leaves. Brantianums were $20. And these huge Cebu Blue Tartans were 80 bucks. They had lots of different varieties of prayer plants ranging from $19.99 to $29.99. I'd like to add a couple to my collection at some point. I've just struggled with them in the past and I think I have enough on my plate right now. They had lots of hanging pots of Hoya. I saw Crimson Queen, Pubicalyx, Wayetii, Perticii, as well as Alacanosa, and these were $60. They did have a good selection of more available and common Anthuriums, as well as some expensive ones. I really liked this Arrow Anthurium. It was $15. Mm -hmm. 
Norwegian pterodactyl anthurium. I seriously just wanted to get it for the name. Those were $30 too. So we have some pubic calyx, both trellised and hanging for $25, and three inch pots of Cutisei for eight bucks. I adore this Hoya, super easy, quick grower, and very cute. Some green compactor for $7.99. Crimson Princess and Hoya Sunrise for 25 bucks. These were really full pots of Hoya Chelsea for $30. I wasn't sure about this. It was labelled as Croniana. Um, I think it might have been mislabeled. It was pretty and it was a nice full pot for 50 bucks. The Pipers were $40. I really love the look of them. And they had lots of homely aminas. This one was labelled as Dark Farm for $15. So humans have this cage of plants. I always think it's so sad that they need to keep these plants protected from thieves. Anyways, there wasn't anyone available to show me the plants in there, but they have a huge selection of rare, in quotes, plants. I saw alocasia, some velvety phyllos, ring of fire, some baby albos with varying levels of variegation. I think they were albos and not ties. Stanliana, uh, some skin dapsis. Actually, it was it was a very good uh, a very good selection. And actually, I have purchased some plants from the cage in the past, and they're always great quality and they're very reasonably priced compared to the market. These syndapsis were beautiful. I think they're syndapsis. I was so taken with these syndapsis. I don't think I've seen a silver satin in person and it was stunning. They were $30. I'm kind of regretting not getting one now. They have a really good selection of pots, as well as a massive indoor hanging plant section like Epipremnum, Philo, Heteroceum, varieties, lipstick plants, that kind of thing. I don't know what this adorable little plant was, but I was smitten. It was so delicate and pretty. So there we go. That's my tour of humans, or the tropical selection anyway. What did you think? What do you think of the available plants and the prices? I'd love for you to let me know if this is comparable to what's available in your area. Thanks for watching everybody and I hope you're having a great day.